one day somebody does something unspeakable to someone else, to someone you hardly knew, man, you do something about it because you can. This story comes to us from the Chicago Sun Times. What happens when a police officer does an unauthorized police chase? And what further happens when he does it, somebody gets hurt? Well, an unauthorized police chase leading to a traffic accident that left a 15-year-old boy unable to walk or speak will most likely result in a $45 million settlement with the city of Chicago, one of the largest settlements in Chicago history. Now, the proposed payment will go to Nathan Jones, who suffered a massive trauma, traumatic brain injury in the April 2021 crash, according to a family attorney. Now, Jones was a passenger in the 2002 Volkswagen that committed a traffic violation, triggering a police chase through several West Town intersections. It ended at Damon and Grand Avenues when the Volkswagen collided with a Toyota, a crash that would change this teenager's life, Nathan Jones. His severe and permanent injuries require around-the-clock care, according to the suit, including a lasting disability and disfigurement, according to the family's lawsuit. His, he is unable to perform routine activities of daily living, and though he has a normal life expectancy, Jones never will be able to work or support himself, let alone walk, speak, or feed himself. Basically, he's, they say he may live another, you know, until he's 85, 90, whatever, but he's going to be the whole time, that whole time in his career, or his life, I should say, he's unable to even care for himself. His mother and other family members do the round-the-clock care. Now, the proposed settlement is a reflection of the catastrophic injury sustained by this young man and the uncontested cost of his lifetime care that will exceed $40 million. That's according to Lance D. Northcutt, an attorney representing Nathan Jones. Now. He goes on to say, through this settlement, the city and its insurers will avoid what would have been a likely nine-figure verdict in a case where an eighth grader was forever deprived of his ability to walk, speak, or independently function. The proposed $45 million settlement, now it's proposed, is on the agenda for the city council's finance committee, and if agreed, could pass the full council on Wednesday believed to be the largest settlement since the 50 million payout triggered by the fatal fire at 69 West Washington. Chicago taxpayers will be on the hook for $20 million of Jones payment. The rest will be covered by the city's catastrophic insurance policy. So the taxpayers, you people that live in Chicago, you're on the hook for $20 million. Where's that money going to come from? Higher taxes, city tax, local tax. The unmarked gray police car, which was an unmarked gray Ford Explorer that initiated the police chase at 8.20 p.m., was driven by Chicago PD officer Jonathan Perez. Fellow officers Andrew Peng and Eulalio Rodriguez were passengers. There was three cops in that car. The chase violated the Chicago Police Department's newly revamped pursuit policy. The policy prohibits officers from initiating a chase when the most serious offense being committed by the target of the pursuit is a traffic violation or even a theft. So it was a traffic violation. According to Chicago's, uh, Chicago's uh, police pursuit policy, he should have just let him go. He should have been like, yeah, it's a traffic violation. Get him later. But no, man, he, I'm a cop, and he committed a violation. I'm going to get his ass. And now the taxpayers have to pay $20 million of a $45 million settlement should it be approved. Now, it requires a so-called balancing test that weighs the risks to motorists and pedestrians against the risk of letting the suspect go. Changes in the policy intended to clarify language on how police 
supervisors should conduct a balancing test. So here you have a traffic violation. Let them go. Wasn't a murder, wasn't a rape, wasn't a robbery, wasn't any of those. In this case, the Volkswagen being pursued was being driven by Khalil Riggs or Khalil Rags. At the time, Rags was a convicted felon with a long rap sheet, but no outstanding warrants. It appears he was chased because he ran a traffic light or a stop sign at Wood and Huron and continued to do the same at numerous intersections during the chase. After the crash, Rags was convicted of multiple felony accounts of aggravated reckless driving and another count of aggravated unlawful use of a weapon. Police recovered a gun from the Volkswagen after the accident, and he was sentenced uh, to three years in prison. But they said unlawful use of a weapon because they recovered the gun. How was he trying to use it? Did he put his, putting it out the window or something? I didn't say anything about that. Now, he has since been charged in two other felonies, including a looting incident during the civil unrest of 2020. Remember the George Floyd riots? Police report filed after Rags was arrested for his role in this crash claim the three officers terminated the pursuit just before the accident. Well, it was a little too late. Too little too late. Then it goes down and talks a lot more about it. If you want to read it in the description box, the link is there. And it's quite lengthy, quite lengthy. But the bottom line here is that, hey, when your police chief or your sheriff sits down and writes that policy, there's a reason behind him writing that policy. Cops don't care. Perez ain't paying this bill. The residents of Chicago are paying it. And you say, well, they're paying half of it. They're only paying 20. Who do you think pays for that catastrophic insurance that the city has? 